So I have been personally uh, living a zero waste lifestyle since five years now. And uh, when I say zero waste, it's an aspirational world. Of course, there have been times where it's not perfect. Uh, I come from a fashion background, so I have seen the worst impacts of the heaviest kind of wasteful consumerism and production processes. And from there, I have shifted into working in sustainability as a career where I started a startup called ulusu.com, where after understanding how it is to live a zero waste lifestyle, I created a platform where people can find access to resources quickly if they want to live a zero waste lifestyle, because I realized one of the biggest roadblocks to shifting to circularity or shifting to a zero waste lifestyle was people who were interested, but they wouldn't find the resources very quickly. Uh, it would take almost one year to, for people to find and research and understand what kind of product to switch to, what to do, what to do with the waste they have. And I didn't want that difficulty to deter anyone from being able to adopt a sustainable lifestyle. If it is easy for you to find a gym, if you want to be fit, it should also be easy for you to find the solutions to live sustainably if you choose to do so. And with that, we started olusu.com. And uh, now I'm running that. I also help partner with a business called Wasted 360 in Bangalore, uh, which helps with uh, all your waste management solutions at home. So the agenda for today's session will be understanding uh, these five aspects, why waste exists to even begin with, uh, you know, what, why do we have a system where uh, waste even happens? Uh, what is linear versus circular design? Uh, in terms of, you know, what the products around us are really like, how do we make that shift from the problematic products to the better solutions, a uh, rapid fire round so that you can understand uh, and get a grasp of coming up with the solutions yourself. So you don't have to worry about checklists in the future of how to live sustainably. And fifth will be circularity. What does it look like when it's scaled up to businesses? So yes, we'd like to begin the session. Uh, Sunita, has everyone joined the session? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, quickly share in the chat, which uh, pictures out of these uh, do you think is a cleaner house? It's a very obvious question, but obviously uh, I want you guys to understand. Okay. Yeah. First left one, left one, this one is cleaner. So yeah, got it. Uh, which neighborhood and street do you find cleaner? The first one, right? And the slum area. But what do you think happened to the waste in the first picture, even in the house, where did the first picture go? It went in the dustbin, right? In the street, where do you think all the waste from the street went? Disposed in the right, yeah. So are we really cleaning? Are we really cleaning or are we just shifting the waste, right? So that's one example we can show. Which city do you think is cleaner? The left one is New York City, the right one is Mumbai. We always accuse our country of being very dirty and we mostly at you, uh, you know, credit uh, littering with that. And we feel as long as littering can end, cleanliness will be there, right? But every uh, city litters, uh, maybe they're a little more strict about it not being visible out in public. They might do it in a bin, but New York City has a very, very huge reputation of being a very wasteful city. So the fact that they look clean doesn't mean that they have maybe better management systems, it means they're just sending it to different countries, uh, which are managing the waste on their behalf. So again, nobody's really managing waste. We are just shifting the waste from one place to another. In our house, we are shifting it from our hall to our dustbin. In the cities, we are shifting it from high income areas to low income areas. In the world, countries are shifting it from their country to another country. But everything is ending up in the one place, which is landfills. And landfills are not a solution at all. So we aren't really cleaning. We are hoarding waste and we are hiding waste away from our eyesight. And that's when uh, we realize the end destination of everyone's waste in their dustbin is a landfill. And landfill is not a solution. How many of us remember this movie called Wally? -E? It was a Disney, like it was an animated Pixar movie. And it showed a world where the Earth's uh, surface was just not enough to cover all the waste that we had created in the world. And we can see that example now as landfills have started and like cities have started developing around landfills because development uh, obviously needs to continue as long as there's population of people who want to live that way. Uh, but the landfills also keep increasing. So hoarding is obviously not the solution. We need a better waste management system. Uh, why would we ever create waste by choice? If we know that this has uh, led to a, such a dumb problem, uh, why would we create something that has been designed to be used only once? If we actually think about it and look back, 
no other species on the planet creates waste we don't have a monkey landfill we don't have a tiger landfill we don't have any other species who is going through a landfill problem it's a very uniquely man made issue uh the natural world has a way of recovering back all the materials it produces and everything comes back in a cycle carbon water organic matter any anything that the animals produce so uh waste has become a problem because of a design issue it's a design flaw we innovated something we created something for our benefit for a brief moment but unfortunately we didn't think of what will happen to it after it is disposed and that is because we are stuck in a way where we are following the linear design principles and we are ignoring the circular design principles now circularity is not a new concept okay in linear design what we do is we take we use and we just landfill it and we forget about it there is no concern given for where it comes from and where it goes to in circularity what we think of is even if we take some resources and make a product we use it we return we try to reuse it as many times as possible but circularity is not a new concept because if all of us remember uh, in our grandparents generation and in our parents generation when they were younger uh, the world was circular houses were recycling all the waste they had there was a value for the waste recycling waste they gave they used to get change for Uh, from the kabaddi wala for giving it uh, there were uh, open compost pits in villages where people would throw their organic uh, waste and it would turn into compost and farmers would use it in their farm so everything was circular once upon a time linear design is something that has very recently come up in the last uh, 70 to 80 years and like up to 100 years in some of the western countries so why was linear economy so appealing if it was so stupid as a design if it created all these issues why were we not able to see it in the future and see it would become a problem so there are three lure uh, to linear economy design right uh, back then we felt that the resources would be endless we didn't realize that we would reach a point in time where resources would actually start depleting we would have problems like water table and deforestation and all of this uh the production process is much faster when you keep it linear when you keep just take make dispose and you don't have to worry about recovering the material back again if you remember the pepsi coca cola glass bottles that used to be sold a uh, shopkeeper would uh, take the deposit back it would go back to the factory it would get cleaned it would get refilled and then packaged and sent that process is much more uh energy consuming than a disposable process which is very convenient for the factory and they can produce much bigger quantities uh in the linear design but they also don't have to worry about the disposal that's uh that happens at the end and for the customer it's a very easy experience you can just pick up the bottle go anywhere throw it anywhere if you know you don't have to worry about coming back and uh, giving it so the distribution got very easy and of course when we make a product that is designed to be disposed after one use you will always have a repeat customer which means that the profits are much higher in the linear economy uh which is the fastest way to make business but the problem with linear economy is the consequences we are facing now we are having lack of resources and we can see all the trash accumulating everywhere causing all kinds of problem to the ecosystem and to our health and uh you know our ability to enjoy our environment as well so now that we are recognizing the consequences we are realizing that the short term benefits of linear economy are not worth it in the long run for us and we have to find a way to come back to circularity again this is where the idea of the zero waste movement comes in now i will discuss zero waste movement uh, on an individual level as an example but please don't take it as a uh, understanding that only individuals are responsible for making the shift but it is important for individuals to understand how to make the shift the idea behind zero waste movement is basically waste would never exist if it was not produced in the first place and if this concept is possible it means none of us would generate waste in the first place and landfills will be redundant now how can that be done if we notice around our house most of the things that generate waste are uh, are things like packaging waste food packaging waste packaging waste of things we buy and shop for and we have to throw it away because there's not enough that we can do with it or upcycle or anything like that so uh, a woman named bia johnson for the i mean we all say that you know indians have always been zero waste but bia johnson was someone who intentionally tried to live a zero waste lifestyle uh, despite living in a world that was in, in still living in linear economy and what she did was she tried to source 
items in her house without packaging in a zero waste manner she tried to bring groceries in her home uh, without packaging she took her own cloth bags to places she tried to get things avoid things that she didn't need anymore and uh, slowly when she tried to do this experiment over time she realized her family had generated only one mason jar of uh, waste over four years or three years and she had two kids and a husband and you know uh, herself her waste as well had reduced so much what did she do with the waste that she couldn't help she tried to recycle it and with organic matter she tried to compost it so all of it got managed even if there was some waste generated uh now we are going to understand uh, what is uh, how do we prioritize solutions in a zero waste world a lot of times we are very partial to certain solutions compared to others for example we say no cut cutlery should be compostable that is more convenient for people that's why it's a real solution uh, recycling is not the real solution because it still means we are buying plastic you know reusability is not possible for everyone because it requires us to carry around too many things all the time but uh, if we just keep those points aside uh, in terms of uh, sustainability what is most sustainable to least sustainable this is how the priority works reusable is first because that consumes the least amount of energy and you can use the same item again and again it takes the least amount of time for the energy to be recovered because there's no waste created here and you just have to make that product once recyclability is slightly lesser than that it takes more time for the energy to be recovered which which is why the circle is bigger than reusability which means that if i use something that is recyclable and i have to put it in recycling it goes in the machinery it will uh, the energy will be recovered the processing needs to happen and then it will come back as its uh, form again and we can keep reusing that so uh, recyclability is second priority because the, it takes more energy and compostable is the last because the amount of time it takes for a compostable item to biodegrade the nutrients to go back in the earth and soil and for that kind of crop to grow again to become a compostable product again is much longer and the much much more time consuming as a process so it is seen as the least ideal solution in the zero waste world although in the current world because we are living in a a uh, world where plastic pollution is a much bigger problem we see that as a very ideal solution but our objective should be to shift to a smaller circle over time so um since a lot of you have an understanding of uh, uh you know how to now come up with uh, zero waste solutions of your own i just want to test if uh, you know how much you have understood the concept so uh, please uh, go to menti.com on your phones Uh, go to the browser click on menti.com and enter this code and uh, see if you can help us uh, answer these questions so i get an idea of you know how well you are understanding this concept so uh, look around everything that we are using uh, i'm going to say some day to day lifestyle items uh, around us yeah the code is 16328908 uh please uh, raise your hands once you have uh, entered and logged into menti.com with your code so i get an idea how many people have already started so we'll start with like a easy mode we'll point out all the objects and items around us in our day to day lives which fall under the linear design which means they have been designed to only be used once and thrown away and you have to come up with solutions for that uh, the most ideal solution you can think of it doesn't have to be one answer uh, it can be i've given you the option to answer three different answers so now that you've understood that there's a priority list reusable is first recyclable and compostable you can come up with the answers okay has everyone logged into menti.com and entered this code 16328908 there's a lot of people who haven't logged into this yet uh, you will not be able to answer the quiz but we'll go ahead with the ones uh, who have does anyone need any time how do we answer you just have to type into the boxes that you see there are three boxes you just have to type into that 
Yeah. After we are done with this quiz, I'm going to continue with uh, how I personally live a zero waste lifestyle and how much of those answers, even though we answer idealistically, how much of that is actually possible in our real lives. So everyone has answered for plastic straw. We see metal straw, bamboo straw, paper straw, but the best answer is no straw. Exactly. If uh, we don't need to manufacture at all to begin with, there won't be any. The best answer below that is metal straw. If say you're a senior citizen, you still need a straw. You can't really lift an entire thing. I've seen that happen. Uh, bamboo straw, a uh, little more disposable in nature, but luckily bamboo is a more renewable uh, material. And yeah, paper straws, everything is like your uh, worst case scenario solution, I would say. All right, let's move on to the next one. Tissue paper. What would be the answer for tissue paper? If tissue paper is an example of an item designed to be disposed after single use, what would be the circular solution where you can use that item again and again? Okay. Cloth napkins. Yes. And if you remember before in restaurants, in old school hotels, um, they used they give a big cloth napkin. Uh, they still keep a tissue paper because we culturally are very accustomed to using it, but you have the option to avoid those tissue papers and cloth napkins is the best way to go about it. You can also carry your own. It's also a great excuse to start conversations and help people. <laughs> plastic bags. What would be the solution for plastic bags? Um, it's very simple. Jute bags. Is jute the important factor here? Does it need to be jute? Does it need to be cloth? Cloth. You, you must have heard of a lot of uh, articles which say that, oh, cloth bag is more carbon footprint than plastic bag. But they are considering cloth bag if it is used as a single use item. If we are throwing away cloth bags after single use, then it will be a higher carbon footprint than plastic bags. But that's not the case. Using any bag, any bag you have at home, if you reuse the bag, the impact will be lesser. Of course, plastic bags are very flimsy and they break over time. So we recommend that you use something sturdy like cloth bags. Let's try the next one. Single-use plastic bottles. What is the solution to this? Carrying your own. Serving in glass bottles, not to use. Yeah, if there's a glass bottle also, it should not be used in a disposable way. It has to be refilled. So simply companies switching their package into a glass bottle without taking responsibility for how that glass bottle gets recycled makes it pointless. So carrying bottles that can be refilled. So whenever you stop at any point or anywhere where you're traveling, uh, you know, make sure to ask in, you know, hotels or some fast food joint, they will always have filtered refilling water point but they will not talk about it because they're forced to sell water first but the staff is obviously drinking safe water which you can also consume and that is how i've managed to never buy a plastic bottle despite traveling so much and trekking so much everywhere plastic toothbrush what is the answer to that Bamboo toothbrush, okay. Datun, that's uh, interesting as well. Would anyone in the urban cities these days be able to switch to a Datun? It's a, it's a very hard switch if anyone has tried. Electric toothbrush, if maybe just the head is replaceable, um, it would reduce the amount of waste at least generated, if not uh, eliminate. So main problem with toothbrush is it's not even straightforward plastic that is easy to recycle. It is mixed with rubber and all these other elements in the design, which makes it very difficult to recycle. So yeah, bamboo toothbrush is our best bet so far. Um, using finger. <laughs> Kudos to you guys. Okay, toothpaste in tubes. What is the problem with toothpaste in tubes? Is it the toothpaste that's the problem or the tubes, the way they're designed? So uh, tubes, uh, products that come in tubes, even cosmetics, even all of these things, the 
tubes are made of multi layered packaging which are difficult to recycle so it's not even recyclable after you're done you can't even refill it once you've emptied a tube you can't even put it back you can't put a product back in it so toothpaste tablets is an answer uh, tooth powder is an answer anything that has been made in a dry uh, format so that the packaging is not uh, does not require to be multi layer or you know plastic makes it much easier even if the tubes were designed to be purely aluminum uh, with with you know no multi layer packaging it would be easier to recycle it yeah simpler packaging reusable packaging if there's a jar that whose that you can open you can even reuse the jar at least after you're done with the product liquid body wash now every liquid product requires you to package it in plastic so what would be the answer uh, for liquid body wash soap bar refillable body for that you would need to have a business which is coming to your doorstep refilling it or for you to be able to take that bottle somewhere and refill it maybe you might not find the time for that but the best answer is shower less is not the best answer um so bar is a much easier solution to all of this all right liquid shampoo has anyone seen alternatives for liquid shampoo they have become quite common in the market today shampoo bar uh on olisu.com as well we have multiple brands on our website which have shampoo bar options they now have it for curly hair dry hair just like you will find options in liquid shampoo products you will find it in shampoo bar as well and they're all of varying qualities and you know prices and you can see the one that suits you best pepsi coke beer someone has experimented powder yes. shampoo is uh, another solution some people try rita shika kai you know hair mask they make it at home as well a uh, little time consuming if you have that kind of time but uh, i don't think uh, anything is more convenient than switching to a shampoo bar yeah was anyone speaking let's move on to the next one do not use shampoo so i would like to encourage during the session the answer to anything should not be to quit things if something's wasteful if something is a linear problem let's try to be creative with a solution that it can be replaced with rather than completely think about quitting things all the time because when we come up with solutions which require us to tell people hey don't use this at all and you can live without it uh, that kind of a rhetoric will not spread very well and uh, if if it was that easy to adopt people would have done it by now so we need to come up with convenient solutions which you can see around you already and you have seen people use it already sanitary pads cups yeah some people have difficulty using cups what can they do have you heard of other alternatives cloth pads yes uh, there's also something called as a period panty uh, which is basically a more absorbable leak proof uh, item so all of these are reusable solutions Uh, which is amazing because it means just for your biological need you don't need to send things to landfill they're also a biomedical hazard sanitary pads no matter how how much they say it's safe it's you know biodegradable most of them tend to not be uh, and it's still a bio a bio hazard waste someone is putting their hands and sorting through your waste that's quite undignified so switching to reusables is really not just the environmentally good thing to do but also the ethical thing to do disposable razors men you would know the answer to this you're using an item at home that is reusable trimmers reusable razors yes where you only switch the blade and even the blade is metal it either rusts and goes away uh, uh, or you can safely wrap it in newspaper and it can be added to metal scraps yeah grandfather blades and these are back in the market as well Uh, also there's a difference between battery operated versus rechargeable battery operated will be again wasteful because the batteries will get wasted after single use instead of that look for rechargeable items so that those are more reusable in nature and they don't generate waste so there is design in every aspect of the product also if if someone has made a product that requires you to throw it away you are immediately creating waste just by you know uh, agreeing to that design and you know buying in to that to get uh, in the first place chips 
Okay, so now if you notice in the quiz also, there's a round one restaurant. We covered everything. We covered everything in our bathroom and washrooms. Now let's see what uh, it looks like if uh, we were throwing a party uh, and how would we make a party go zero waste at home? Anjana. So say you want Anjana. to... Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how would you arrange chips for your party without generating the obvious waste that would be the chips packet home cooked okay that's an option but takes a lot of time airtight containers salty makhana have you heard of any business uh, if you guys are um, have been in south indian uh, cities also I think even in north there is options uh, in shops where snacks are sold in open so for sun, uh, hot chips uh, sh shops, uh, you might have seen them stock these items in plastic packets, but they make it fresh right there. So if you carried your own container, you took your own cloth bag, uh, they will fill it up in that. You just have to pay per weight and bring it back home. And uh, we have actually organized a zero waste party in our home that way by bringing all the snacks in a zero waste way without any packaging. So yeah, hot chips is a, a great option. Take out food. So ordering in Swiggy is again generating a lot of waste. A lot of times this is waste that you can't really avoid. I'm not saying I have been perfect at this. Uh, but if you had to say make a choice today, I don't want to generate any waste because of takeout food. Ask them to skip cutlery. Yes, there are at least some basic things that we can try and see if we can request. Um, there are a lot of solutions as a self-carried container. Maybe you can plan uh, stepping out. You know, a lot of times we make plans to order in food. Try and see if you can just step out, dine in sometimes, you know. Uh, maybe go to the restaurant, get your order packed and bring it home. Especially if it's for a huge party, you can just take bigger containers and get things uh, ordered. So there are other ways to do this. Infinity Box Startup. Yes, that's interesting. Uh, we will be mentioning that later in the session. So we have all these options. It's important to know the solutions irrespective of whether or not you're able to opt for them. So you know that if you have the option to do it better, at least someday you will be able to try. Plastic confetti. Flowers, okay. There's dry leaves. Um, overall confetti seems like a very messy affair, but uh, there are options to plastic confetti you can go for. Nowadays in the market, they make paper confetti as well. That's an easier option. Uh, try and check when you before you buy whether it's a plastic confetti or paper confetti because small plastics are the hardest to find and catch and recycle. This will definitely go in your dustbin. This will definitely go in the landfills. And they also become a menace for the ecosystem around and the animals around. So bigger plastic items can at least be picked up by kabadiwalas and recycled and prevented from being a waste. But things which are like small plastics become the bigger menace. So careful with those things. Balloons. So sorry to burst your bubble, but balloons are also designed for single use. And every time we burst a balloon, uh, we are basically putting it in a position where we can't reuse it ever again. So what can be the solution for balloons? Skip them. Yeah, that is genuinely one of those things that just needs to be skipped because it doesn't have an alternative. Uh, paper lanterns, there's a lot of ways to decorate. If anyone can go on Pinterest and see zero waste decorations, you'll find so many ideas. You'll find um, reusable cloth, uh, you know, decoratives. You can find a lot of options, paper, origami, lanterns, all of these things. Cigarette butts. Is anyone aware what to do with the cigarette butts? or has friends who smoke, who are generating a lot of cigarette butt waste. And it's also the kind of waste which goes, um, even when we are walking around outside, it just, you know, we throw it after one use and we stamp it and we keep walking. We don't even think about the fact that it needs to go in the dustbin. Quit smoking, Isha, Shisha. No, you can't really carry around your Shisha everywhere. Quitting smoking is obviously an answer. Uh, but what do you do now with the butts that you have? Coconut shell. I'm not sure what that answer is. Uh, 
uh, you have to enter the answers in the boxes i hope everyone understood that yeah so uh, cigarette butts can actually be recycled there's an organization in noida called code effort uh, if you collect cigarette butts in a box over time uh, you know just clean out once it's done and just put the cigarette butt part uh, you can send it for recycling and now there are multiple collectors we have one in bangalore called wasted 360 who will collect cigarette butts and once we have reached a certain quantity we send it over to noida for recycling and these filters are cleaned the toxins are removed and they have a certification uh, of how clean uh, the resultant fiber is which is used as a stuffing in mattresses pillows and other such products so cigarette butts can actually be recycled and they're very harmful if they go into the environment, they leach toxins and they're very small in size. Like I said, small plastic, small sized waste is the most dangerous waste. So there is an option. Even if, if, if you're at least not able to quit smoking, you can at least start collecting cigarette butts. So that is uh, definitely one option. Mixers. Say you are serving drinks and you need to decide mixers. Will we get Pepsi, Coca-Cola, which come in plastic bottles? Or what else can we do to avoid the waste that comes from uh, the mixers that we buy? Have it neat, fruit juices. Have it neat. <laughs> That is uh, maybe a solution for people below the age of 25. Uh, direct fruit juices, yes, it certainly helps. Um, uh, water, you know, there's a lot of ways. I'm, I'm sure people were enjoying their drinks even before Pepsi and Coca-Cola and 7-Up was invented. So that you can look at some traditional recipes as well. Okay, now let's move on to work and office. The items around you in your office space. Uh, what do you do with pens which have disposable refills inside them? How, do, how What is the answer for disposable pens? Bamboo pen is there, yes, but all the solutions that we see, paper pens, bamboo pens, they still require a refillable uh, they, they still require the disposable refills inside. Basically, after that ink is over, you need to throw that plastic thing away. So what is the answer to that? Fountain pens, ink pens, yes. Fountain pens and ink pens are genuinely reusable. Uh, you just have to refill the ink part and uh, you'll be able to use that pen for a very long time. Use digital is another step. Uh, of course, dig going digital will also reduce a lot of physical waste. Yes. Tea, coffee, paper cups. Uh, is everyone aware here that paper cups are actually not biodegradable because they're lined with plastic? And even if they are biodegradable, you have to keep in mind in our idealistic circular world we are talking about in this session, it's the last option. We are looking for something even more ideal. Carrying your own cup, bring your own mug. The office can make a decision to keep only reusable cups and mugs in their uh, pantry and uh, have someone to just wash them at the end of the day. You can keep your own mug, which is more hygienic, I feel. Kulhar Chai is a disposable design. It's not very reusable, which is still problematic environmentally in the long term. Use it for seedling. Upcycling can be done only to a certain extent. You can't upcycle every waste you create. So reusable mugs are your best solution. So we're getting a hint of what is better, right? What is better? You can come up with biodegradable solutions, but they will not be a best case scenario. There has to be something better than that. Coffee stirrer, spoons. Yes. Why do we have coffee stirrers? I don't understand it. So coffee stirrer, very unnecessary design, unnecessary product that doesn't need to be around. Um, even the biodegradable version of coffee stirrers doesn't need to be around in my opinion. We can just have spoons to stir. Whiteboard and markers. Now, in my opinion, I'm a little biased towards my whiteboard and markers, but it does generate waste. Markers, once they're done, you're done using it, you have to throw it away. Digital board is an answer. Chalk, your traditional blackboard and chalk is also quite zero waste, actually. Uh, digital board is a much easier answer. 
Okay, now we'll move on to fashion. There are some disposable things and designs in fashion that can have better solutions. So, have you heard of uh, fake PU leather? Uh, now it is touted as the vegan alternative, which makes it you know ethical. But what's better than even fake leather? Because fake leather is also made of plastic in a way. Fruit leather, yes. There's a lot of innovations that are coming out of that. Uh, cotton, khadi, jute. Yes, if you want to wear a leather jacket, maybe try and check out a denim jacket. It'll give you the same effect. You won't have the problem with disposability of your jacket in after some time. Uh, fruit leather uh, innovations are being made. There is mushroom leather as well. Uh, there's a lot of options that are there in the market. There's cactus leather as well. Yes, recycled PET bottle. A uh, temporary solution, I would say, because once you've recycled the PET bottles into fabric, there is no way to put that fabric back into the circulation again. That again becomes wasteful in a way. Uh, you can do it once, appreciate it. Maybe the plastic bottle doesn't get wasted, but we need to think of some long-term solutions. Elastic bands and pants. So we use a lot of elasticated pants because of which we need elastics in them and elastics are made of polyester. Polyester is plastic. Now, what uh, form of pant design do you remember which would fit tightly around your waist and didn't require elastics? Well, cotton band, you remember Nada's, that was a kind of design. Now, I'm not saying we need to all switch to that, but we're trying to just brainstorm circular ideas which don't require us to create things out of uh, materials that are disposable. Right. So with that, we have reached the end of the quiz. Uh, we will just hold on. Yeah, we will now go back to our presentation. Yeah. So you guys have a very good understanding of what circular solutions look like. You have all answered it in the quiz. You have seen it on the screen. Uh, I have hope that you know uh, the only thing that stands between you making choices is maybe practical things, circumstantial things, time related issues. And it's not really awareness of the solutions that is stopping you. Maybe it's access to the solution that is stopping you. I'll talk about how I personally started living a zero waste lifestyle. Uh, when I first discovered it, I thought it was just a European or a very Western country thing. But then I realized that these concepts were always there in India. I took a look around my neighborhood and I saw a lot of grocery stores where grains and items that I have been buying packaged were selling open anyway all this time. Uh, I found some in my neighborhood as well. You know, if you just take a walk around your neighborhood, you don't realize how many resources you have. Uh, but you might be living in some areas where you don't have access and you need to order in. But a lot of times we do have access to solutions. We just don't look for it. So I looked for bulk stores where I could go with my own cloth bags and buy items. I looked for things in reusable packaging so that even if I was done reusing that oil or that product, I could re uh, refill or you know reuse that jar. I also found something like oil mills near my house where I could just go with my big jar. I could buy like five liters of cooking oil at once and you know uh, I would be sorted for several months. So that was just an errand I had to do once in a while. And for the waste that I could not uh, manage, for the waste that came to my house anyway, despite making all these changes, I decided that the only way to bridge the gap from shifting to linear design to circularity was figuring out how can I recycle the packaging waste that I generated at home. And this is which this is something that most people uh, don't realize it's something they can do. You know, uh, they think that the only way to go zero waste is to perfectly do it or else to just, you know, not do it at all otherwise. So what I did with my packaging was I started keeping it in a clean manner. Now, for things to get recycled at home, they need to not have food contamination. Your kabadiwala only collects the clean items out of the trash you give out. And he's able to make money only out of the cleaned items that he can collect. He cannot make money out of the plastic that you give out, which still has food in it, which still has oil stains in it, which still has a lot of dirt in it. And because it's so time consuming for them to clean it out, it's easier for them to just throw it away. And all of that goes to non-recyclable landfills, even though they could have been recycled if you had just cleaned them. So cleaning your dry waste is a very important step in making sure that that waste doesn't get wasted in landfills or doesn't end up in landfills. 
So the first step I started doing was I started collecting all the materials to which I knew there was an answer for recycling or there was an organization I could send it to. I realized tetra packs get recycled. I realized paper gets recycled. So I started flattening the paper boxes and keeping it. I recycled aluminum gets recycled. So I started cleaning the aluminum foils and cans and all your you know beverage cans that were in aluminum and I would rinse them and just store them for recycling. I knew paper was recycled. And I also uh, found a place which recycles plastic packets as long as they're cleaned and they're sent. So I started storing them separately. And uh, there, are, there were different things I learned about recyclability. Basically, people say, yes, plastic is recyclable. Uh, glass can be recycled, this, that. Everything is environment friendly as long as it can be recycled. But there is a difference in the way things get recycled. If I recycle metal and glass, Basically, you melt metal, you can make the same type of metal product again. If I melt glass, I can make the same type of glass again. So the entire item, entire material is recovered 100%. This is the best kind of recycling because this means no energy is lost, no material is lost in the process. Paper and plastic cannot be recycled 100%. Every time you recycle paper, it reduces in quality over time until it reaches a point where it is so flimsy and soft that it has to be thrown away or it has to be made into something that needs to be composted. Uh, at least it can be composted. With plastics, the problem is even worse that every time you recycle hard plastic, it becomes into a softer and softer flimsier plastic until it reaches a point where it cannot be recycled anymore and it breaks down into microplastics. But now there are some technologies where this plastic can be converted into fuel, polyfuel, which is similar to kerosene and people are using it as a fuel. So that is the best case scenario rather than letting it go into the environment. Uh, other types of waste which are mixed, which are much harder to process, which your BBMP or your you know authorities will not collect uh, are things like e-waste. E-waste uh, can be recycled. There's a lot of precious metal inside which can be recovered. Tetra pack can be recycled. You just have to rinse it and keep it and people are using it to recycle it into tables and chairs. The only issue with this is right now, it's a very linear process. That table and chair does not, again, come back into that very easily. And cigarette butts can be recycled, as I explained before. It's used as a stuffing for pillows and toys. Uh, but again, that's also a linear method. Uh, the best way to do it would be just to reduce it. And we have actually noticed a lot of people who collect cigarette butts and submit it at our organization in Wasted360. They tell us that because they started collecting the cigarette butts, they can now track how much waste they generate and that makes them want to consume less as well automatically. So, you know, that is a very nice way that, you know, recycling can actually help you improve your lifestyle. And there are other things that don't get recycled at all. And, you know, these are destined for landfill, unfortunately. Uh, but this does reduce in volume as you work on, you know, how you're buying things and how you're making decisions. Uh, please note that if you have heard of eco bricks anywhere online, it is not the right solution to waste management. It is a form of craft. It is a form of upcycling. If you have any project at home you want to create like a stool or something that you're building, only then make it. But please do not make it randomly if you don't have a plan of what to do with it. And uh, once you know, I figured out how to recycle things, I just had to worry about my kitchen scrap and organic waste. So what did I do with that food contamination when I cleaned it out, right? I started composting at home. And the reason why composting is more important than just throwing it away in a plastic bag wrapped to the authorities is because when you wrap uh, wet waste in plastic bags, it emits methane. Methane is a gas which stinks a lot, which is why your wet waste dustbin in your home stinks a lot. It's producing methane because there is no way for oxygen to enter and actually decompose your wet waste. And methane is 20x more potent than carbon dioxide, which means it's directly contributing to climate change. The landfills are contributing to climate change. Uh, if you've seen news of landfills catching fire in Delhi, uh, just a pile of dry plastic or you know dry uh, waste is not going to catch a fire on its own. It's catching fire because there is wet waste mixed in it, which is creating methane, and that methane is catching fire from the heat. So it's very important that wet waste degrades in a safe manner, like a compost bin. So I tried experimenting in compost bin in a balcony outside, in a corner balcony I had in my home. Uh, you take a earthen pot which has holes on the walls. You can get an item like this from a company called Daily Dump. And you can start layering your wet waste. So wet waste should not be trapped. 
uh, otherwise it will start stinking like sewage but if it is balanced with dry waste like dry leaves or dry cocoa peat uh, it will biodegrade in a much safer manner it will not stink it will not create a menace and it will actually reduce in volume over time so this bucket of compost that you see was generated over six months this takes a very long time for compost to be made and it's convenient once you understand how to actually make it in a safe manner a lot of people treat uh, compost bin like a dustbin it's not to be done that way compost is basically the manifestation of what your forest floor looks like in out in the nature and i started swapping some products at home for example i started saying no to you know straws i started saying no to paper cups i carried a few reusables with me wherever i went i switched to some products which came in reusable packaging so that uh, i didn't end up with too much plastic waste at the end of the day and there were items in my home which had plastic bristles which were falling out which were creating a menace i switched to more natural uh, you know uh, alternatives for that so you can find these kind of solutions and products online very easily uh, I would say this is maybe something you won't have to worry about too much as long as you're able to manage your recycling and wet waste very well. Consider 90 to 80 percent of your waste at home already eliminated. Product switches are a small change, uh, which I would say try and do it as much as you can to support circular innovations. All right. So we'll be discussing circularity in business now and how these ideas have been converted in businesses now you might think okay this is too much to do on our own but obviously uh trying to live zero waste in today's world which is designed to be wasteful is like a fish trying to swim upstream it will be difficult because you're the only person who understands what the solution looks like and the businesses are not making your situation any easier so here are some ideas of businesses which i have uh, noted down and i would love for you guys to note this down as well because maybe you can reach out to this business and you know uh, try them if you live in the area where uh, they give their services yeah so circularity can be applied at different levels raw materials design distribution usage how are we using it and end of life Raw materials, basically, uh, there are some problems right now uh, that circular businesses face. Raw materials is sometimes uh, where cost is very high, so maybe the product ends up a little more exp uh, expensive. Design may, there is skepticism on usage and fast adoption. You might come up with a circular design, but people will be skeptical whether people will adopt it or not. We are already so addicted to tissue papers, this and that, you know, how easy is it, is it to convince people to sh shift? Distribution, you know, um, Packaging is the reason why distribution has become so easy, why it is so easy for us to get seven minute, 10 minute home deliveries, because everything is just kept on shelves and it needs to be picked and thrown into our homes. So return logistics, if it was a reusable packaging, uh, is a, you know, a huge cost and a huge burden that businesses see it as. So it's very difficult for businesses to shift to circularity because of this. Usage, you know, even once we buy it, are we making the best use of it? Things like clothes, Clothes can be reused a lot, but because of the taboos, because of status quo, we keep shopping for more and more. And even before our old clothes get ruined, we are looking forward to giving them off for donation to make space and shop new. So there are a lot of consumer cultures also that needs to change for, you know, circularity to be adopted. End of life. Do we know what to do with our waste once we give it away? And our business is making it easier for us to manage our waste. So these are uh, five aspects in which circularity um, can be applied in business and the problems that they're facing. Now look at uh, raw materials. How can raw materials become uh, circular? Maybe if the raw material itself was waste and not a fresh brand new resource, then we would be able to fix a lot of the waste problems that we're facing, right? So there's this company that makes uh, bags from rubber tire. It's called R Imagined. You can check them out. Uh, these products are also available on our website. And there is also a brand called Reach Arkha which weaves plastic bags. They make it into yarn and they actually put it on a handloom machine and they weave it into sheets and they create bags out of it. Um, and they have very refined looking products, which are the end products, which you can also check out and use. The more we uh, support such innovations and ideas, the more we are literally encouraging the waste from not going into landfills and the waste instead becoming more valuable for a recycler also. So even your kabadi walas will earn more if they realize that these are waste that uh, is generating more money in the economy, right? So that's how we uh, make recycling more valuable as well. Distribution systems. So you must have come across ideas like Adrish Zero Waste, 
it's a organic store that has 16 branches across india and it has many more branches across us as well even in your regular supermarkets you must have seen things being uh, sold open uh, this is something i had shown previously but the only thing that it requires is a little cooperation from the customers end where they bring reusables in their own bag some of these grocery uh, zero waste grocery stores also offer a uh, zero waste home delivery so if you live in a city which has adrish zero waste store they might even home deliver the items in a zero waste way to your doorstep another example of distribution done zero waste is doorstep uh, you know refillable uh, service so refillable india is a service which comes with a truck and they deliver shampoo floor cleaner hand wash all of these liquid items which we previously discussed was very difficult to manage without plastic bottles in a refillable manner where you can take your bottle refill it just pay for the amount that you have refilled and uh, you can uh, use it until the next refill and they are active in mumbai bangalore surat uh, and they are also trying to enter chennai and lucknow infinity box someone had mentioned this so if you live in uh, balendur sarjapur areas of bangalore uh, you will have access to infinity box uh, box uh, restaurants where they bring you the online delivery in reusable box and they'll also do a pick up on the you know uh, next order uh, i am also yet to try it if someone lives in this area please try and let me know how your experience was clothes you know usage wise how can we get better and circular with clothes uh sticking to things that are second hand is the solution there's a lot of cultural taboo attached to it we refuse to you know switch to something that is second hand but if you think about hello 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 unmute so yeah uh different people have different uh, uh, openness towards what is acceptable for second hand shopping um for example uh, i know people who will be a little hesitant to go for second hand clothes but they're okay with second hand books toys uh, home decor and things like that so what i would recommend is look for thrift shops near you if you're in bangalore you can visit this place called wasted 360 which is in indranagar and it's a huge thrift shop and before you opt to buy anything new try and see if you can opt to buy something that is already been made and created in the you know our ecosystem so that your demand doesn't lead to extraction of new resources all over again so that's how second hand items can cut down your carbon footprint by a lot if you choose to demand less resources from the planet and just use what has already been produced you directly contribute to you know uh, at least 60 to 70% reduction in your own carbon footprint so uh, you know clothes swap vintage stores these are very valuable uh, as a res circular resource in our day to day lives toys are something that are used as well we have been reusing it in our families in india forever uh, there are apps also which you can download which you can check out there's an app called beedle uh, that you can find uh, who do second hand toys you can also sell to them you can also buy from them and this is very important because kids grow out very fast but they get pampered too much uh, and you know we end up with too many things that we don't need at home once they grow out of it perlenko is a circular solution because instead of having to buy a furniture and then not know what to do with it years later you can just rent it as well now obviously there is like cost concerns there's only a certain type of people who can uh, this is more suitable for if you're shifting around houses very often but it is an example of making profits from a circular idea because you're using one furniture and you're selling it to multiple customers and all you need to worry about is repairing that thing as for lenko they don't have to worry about manufacturing of the furnitures as much as they have to worry about just the repair aspect so there are ways for you to profit using circular ideas as well airbnb is a circular idea you don't have to construct a, host, a hotel or a you know a home stay from scratch every time you can have a property you can just put it on airbnb and people can reuse the property that is already there you know it is being put to good use you won't have empty houses which are lying around uselessly um this reduces the need for infrastructure unnecessary development and infrastructure and airbnb is a great example of circularity in usage circularity in end of life what do you do when the waste is generated and you don't have an option or you haven't found a solution yet you're already an established business you are already making packaging waste what can you do with the waste that is being created have a take back program 
have a program where the customers are encouraged to collect their uh, plastics and send it back to your address. Um, maybe that can encourage them to even be more loyal uh, as customers. You know, it can become a loyalty program. It can become a marketing strategy as well. So take back schemes where the product, uh, the business itself takes responsibility for the recycling and rewards the customers is a great way to bring circularity in end of life process. So I would recommend you to only segregate the waste that you know is getting recycled. Don't take too much stress about everything. Uh, it is difficult. Like I said, it is like swimming upstream. So start with the places where you can start and keep discovering you know, uh, resources like this. Now, to make the discovery of resources easy, you can follow me uh, on Instagram, olusu.official and our website, olusu.com. We have something called a package-free map. If you observe over here, we pin every resource we discover, every recycling unit we discover, we pin every thrift shop we discover and every repair shop we discover, uh, every zero-waste store we find. Uh, it is uh, contributed by community and they also get reward and credit points to shop on our website if they contribute to this map because we really want this community map to grow. So if you in your neighborhood want to discover some zero waste resources, package free resources, recycling, Kabadiwala stores near you, you can contribute those locations to our map. And you can also use the map to discover uh, resources yourself. 